I'm going to vote for Donald Trump if I want to vote for Donald Trump. And, and if I want to vote for Donald Trump, it does not make me not black. 20% of black people, black men, as I said, uh, voted for Donald Trump in 2020. Are they not black now? So only 80% of black people, black men walking around are really black, 20% are not, because they voted for Donald Trump. How insulting is that? How condescending is that? Mm. Right. I, I mean, you're probably right, but I didn't take it in that way. As well, I, I said, did. As I said to him in that moment, you of course know, you about me. What's up, YouTube family? Welcome back and welcome if you're new here. Now, y'all know I don't like to waste too much time. I want to get right into these reactions. But real quick, let me say thank you to all my subscribers. I know I've been gone for a minute. My birthday was on Tuesday. I just needed a couple days to just, you know, recalibrate, get myself back into it. And we back, baby. We're over 6,000 right now. Thank you guys so much. Today, we're going to be watching Larry Elder absolutely destroy the Breakfast Club, demolishes them. And uh, I enjoy it very, very much. So let's check it out. Bye. Do you think slavery was self-inflicted? Or do you think Jim Crow segregation was self-inflicted? Or do you think, you know, slavery was self-inflicted? Self of course it wasn't self-inflicted. But, but, uh, but, the but, but, but there are a lot, of, there, a lot of people have bloody hands in slavery. Mm -hmm. For example, slavery could not have existed had it not been for African chieftains who were selling black slaves captured uh, in battle or captured through raids and selling them to European and Arab slavers. It could not, have, it could not have existed without that. So everybody has dirty hands here. That's why reparations is such a foolish thing. If you're going to get reparations from the 5% or so of white people that have some sort of generational connection to slavery, and that's all there is, then you need to go back to Africa uh, and get money from African countries uh, that were involved in the slave trade and, the, and in the Arab slave trade. Agreed. And by the way, the Arab slave trade was even worse than the European slave trade. 90% rate of attrition often making men and women walk on barefoot across the Sahara, and the men were castrated. Castrated. Uh, only about okay, five so, 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 so if they go after the money from the other countries, then would you agree that it would be okay to go after the money from America? Is that when, your when problem? When, with it, when, it when, when, when are you going to stop with this? Everybody has no, a grievance. I just asked a simple I'm just, question. I'm, 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 answering, I'm answering your question. There, no, there, there's no end. The there, there will be no end to this because slavery has okay, been part of human history from the very beginning. Okay, now I've let you talk. Sir, I've let you talk, and every time I talk, you've been talking, and you say let you finish. So I asked you a very simple question. You said, if you're going to go after it in America, go after it in Africa. So if we all agree to go after it in Africa. We'll yeah, but he didn't say that from a serious point like you should do it. He's saying that that's how ridiculous it is to try to go after America, not Africa, who could then go after British colonies, who could then go after Roman. Like, it, it will never end, is what he's saying. If you start looking for reparations, it, you could go all the way back to ancient Egypt. Will you then agree to go after it in America? It's just a simple question. No, yes no, or no. No, I won't because it's a waste of time. We ought to be spending our okay, time no on, on education. Next question. Okay, you, okay, okay. You yeah. told me that, that I cut you off, then I try to answer your question. You won't let me finish. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Larry. Thank you. It's a waste of time. We ought to be talking about working hard, investing in ourselves. Right now, as we speak, there are Haitians uh, in Haiti lining up for a lottery to come into this country. Why? Because it is the land of the free and the home of the brave. You can go from nothing to something faster in America uh, than any than other country else. in all of human history. We ought to be talking about that. Let me just anywhere point. else. 1997, Time Magazine and CNN hooked up together to do a poll on what black teenagers and white teenagers felt about racism. Mm -hmm. And both of them were asked, is racism a major problem in America? Both of them said yes. But then Time and CNN asked this question of the, of the black teenagers. Is racism a big problem, a small problem, or no problem in your own daily life? This is 1997. 89% of them said small problem or no problem in my own daily life. In fact, twice as many blacks said failure to take advantage of available opportunities is a bigger problem than racism. Mm. Twice, 1997. Look it up. It's 2023, though. You that makes his America point. Is more racist now after the election and re-election of Barack Obama than it was in 1997? Yes, because of the election of uh, MAGA, Donald Trump, 100%. Yes. Really? Wow. Absolutely. Well, how is it? How is it, uh, Charlemagne? That Charlemagne, Donald you're Trump an got eighty percent of the black vote in uh, in twenty sixteen. He got twelve percent in twenty twenty. A fifty percent increase. Right. He got twenty percent <laughs> of the black male vote in twenty twenty. Uh, if MAGA is racist, how do you explain that that Donald Trump substantially increased the percentage of black votes the Republican Party got? Sometimes people make. Points. So why are you running against Trump, then, Mister Elder? Yeah, so, I'm, not, so, I'm not. I'm not running against him. I'm running against Biden Harris. Any one of the Republican nominees we have would be better than what we have right now. I'm not running against him. I'm running to put forth the issues I just now mentioned that I've been talking about for the last few minutes. You know, I want to ask you about that. You know, after four indictments, ninety one criminal charges. Don't you think it would behoove the Republican Party to move on from Donald Trump? I think that the voters in the primary will make that decision. What do you think, though? I have no problem with, with uh, I thought Donald Trump did an extraordinary job uh, as president, especially for black people. 
best economy Especially, ever. He did something about actually. the borders. The people that are most hurt because of porous borders are vet, black people living in the inner city because right. most of the illegal aliens have little or no education. They end up living in the inner city. They compete against uh, black people with high school or less for jobs. Mm-hmm. There are about a million fewer black people working than, than who, who would otherwise be working if it weren't for illegal alien labor. And illegal alien labor, according to a study done by the Civil it's Rights cheaper. Commission, puts downward pressure to the tune of almost $2,000 per year in the salaries of black people living in the inner city. Yeah. And Donald Trump uh, gave us the most secure border we ever had. He also supported school choice. He also did the, the First Step Act, which allowed about 5,000 uh, mostly black men with criminals. Non- criminal uh, sentences, nonviolent, to have their sentences reduced an average of 70 months per. Uh, he pardoned Jack Johnson, the first black heavyweight champion. Even Barack Obama didn't do that. Yeah, I he think did a bunch of black rappers. For black people. I think you're innocent until proven guilty, but I feel like <clears throat> no, you don't. President Biden had four indictments, 91 criminal charges. Uh, you know, President Obama had four indictments, 91 criminal charges. Y'all would be telling them that they need to step aside and they shouldn't be running for president. Well, what? I wouldn't vote for Barack Obama or for Joe Biden in any case, no matter whether he had indictments or no indictments. I don't vote for tax and regulate liberals. Um, you're a conservative, right? Mm, no question. What, imi- what initially made you gravitate towards being a conservative? I think it was my father. My father was a lifelong Republican, and my father always told my brothers and me the following. Democrats want to give you something for nothing. When you try and get something for nothing, you almost always end up getting nothing for something. Right. And my dad, I told you about his background. He told my brothers and me that hard work wins. You get out of life what you put into it. You cannot control the outcome, Larry, but you are 100% in control of the effort. Before you moan or groan about what somebody did or said to you, go to the nearest mirror, look at it, and ask yourself, what could I have done to change the outcome? And Ooh. finally, Charlemagne, my dad, told Ooh. me to this. No matter how hard like you, work, you are, sooner or later, bad stuff is going to happen to you. How you deal with those bad things will tell your mother and me if we raised a man. I wrote oh a book about my, my father's God. life. It's called Dear Father, Dear Son, Two Lives, Eight Hours. It's about I like his dad. Shout out to his dad. An eight-hour conversation he and I had, uh, where at the beginning of the conversation, I thought my dad was harsh. He thought he spanked us too often. He, we had a we had a belt in those days uh, from the South. You spank kids. Yes. Uh, and I thought my dad was way too harsh. And we had an eight hour eight hour conversation. And by the time we ended, my dad got bigger and bigger and bigger, and Larry Elder got smaller and smaller and smaller. And I apologized to him. And it's a book that that's changed a lot of people's lives. It's called, as I said, Your Father, Dear Son, Two Lives, Eight Hours. The paperback is called A Lot Like Me. Same book, but it's cheaper. Can you honestly say this is the Republican mm-hmm. Party that you grew up on? This modern-day GOP? Yes. Uh, the Republican Party pretty much has always stood for low taxes, low regulation, uh, 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 peace through strength, Small government. strength through peace, and strong borders, and still does. And and when Donald Trump is gone, and he will be gone, mm-hmm. even if he gets reelected, if the day after he gets reelected, he's a lame duck, the party will still go on. The principles will still go on. However, I do believe that uh, many people in our party uh, have have uh, spent and spent and spent so that Ronald Reagan, my favorite president, when he entered the Oval Office, Charlemagne, uh, when he left, the government was bigger. It got bigger under George Herbert Walker Bush. It got bigger under W. It got bigger under Donald Trump. And the only way to restrain spending is with an amendment to the Constitution to fix spending to a certain percentage of the GDP with exception for war and for natural disaster. Otherwise, we're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Let me use the word unsustainable. Mm-hmm. That's the word Barack Obama used to describe mm. the so-called entitlements. Uh, unsustainable was a word that Bill Clinton used to describe them. But nothing happens because if you run claiming you're going to reform Social Security or Medicare, the other side is going to accuse you of not caring about the sick, the poor, the elderly, and you are going to lose elections. That's why government gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So we need a law to restrain spending. Otherwise, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And for young people like you, uh, these programs are not going to be there. Mr. Elder, uh, I I know a lot of black conservatives, and and I, I... I completely agree about the black family. I, I don't think anybody here objects to that. Don't I disagree just, about that at all. I, I think when you talk about ideology and then you mix in parties and then personalities, it gets kind of confusing. And, you know, you mentioned yourself not to moan and groan, you know, that as long as you work hard, all is well. And I think where the conflict is coming in is you did moan and groan about how the Republicans treated you. You did moan and groan about Governor Newsom and uh, you no, know, didn't. asking for a recall. You did not leave that up to the voters. You are moaning and groaning when it comes to Donald Trump and how he's being treated. So it just seems to be a hypocrisy. Mm. And I don't know if the message would land a little bit better if there was some fairness across the board uh, on Democrats and Republicans. I'm an independent, by the way, and I think both parties are trash. And I think all of us here. So there's a difference between moaning and groaning and just calling out injustice, right? So if something happens to you, you can call it out. That doesn't mean you have to call it out be a victim and no longer work to achieve your goals. See, that's the problem. That's that's where moaning and groaning comes in, where you try to use it as an excuse to stop working. 
If he's just calling out injustices, but still putting in the work to get to where he wants to go, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, see both sides. I and I, that's the part that's just not landing for me. There seems to well, be an unfairness on both sides with you. Well, not too surprisingly, I don't agree with your analysis. How is it that I did not leave the recall to the voters? What do you mean by that? What do you... You said you said, you said I didn't leave the recall to the voters. No, I, no, said, no. I said you moaned and groaned about it. You you said it should be recalled, correct? Correct? I said Gavin Newsom should have been recalled, yes. Right, that's moaning and groaning. Well, actually, it's taking advantage of what's in the California Constitution, which is when a certain percentage of voters sign a petition to recall a politician, uh, there can be a recall vote, and there was one, as there was in 2003. We recalled a governor then, and there was in 20, 2021 when I attempted to recall Gavin Newsom. That's part of our democratic process in California. Uh, absolutely. So absolutely. How is it moaning and groaning? I agree with that. I'm going to your statement when you said, rather than moan about it, a little while ago you said, rather than moan about it, I'm just going to keep doing the hard work. And so I'm just saying that technically is moaning well, about it because I, the governor is the side. I don't, so I don't, I, I don't, that, I don't, that's my I don't, point, I don't, sir. I don't, it's, follow, it's, I don't follow exactly what you're saying. I really it's don't. okay. I, I didn't okay. expect you to. Yeah, but it's, I'm, it's I'm, one I'm, moment. I'm a little, I'm a little slow one sometimes. Moment, one moment. Yeah, we get it. Yeah. One moment you're complaining about the system, and the next minute you're saying the system is, is fair. The next minute you're saying it's not fair. So that's what I'm saying. There just seems to be a double standard on you and the system, not wanting to be accountable for a system that do, black do people I, are not do, in charge of, by the I, way, do I, of not wanting to hold both sides accountable when it comes to the system. Do I believe Hillary was treated differently and Joe Biden treated differently than Donald Trump is being treated? Yes, I do. Is that an indictment about whether or not America is systemically racist? No, it is not. Those are two, they're, they're two totally two different, two different things. things. Yes, you're, yes, you're trying are. to merge the two, but they're two totally different things. No, I you tried to merge the two. No, no we're, we're, agreeing. we're agreeing they're two different things. We're agreeing. No, we're agreeing the two different things. We're not agreeing that there's not systematic racism because we're not in charge of the system, sir. In case you okay, unfamiliar, okay, all right, all right. Can we, can we, black can, people can, have never been in charge of any. And if they were, it would be systemically racist against non-black people. Let's be for real. System. Well, we're not actually, even actually, that actually, we, actually, we have been. Take Baltimore. No, we're, we're, no, we've never been in charge. May, of may any I finish? System. Any? No. But, tell me, what financial system are black people in okay, charge of? Let, what take, healthcare system are black people in charge of? What government system are black people I'm, in I'm charge about, of? I'm about to tell what you. Prison system are back, I'm, no, I'm, black. No, black people I'm about ready to tell you. I'm not talking about mayors. I already know that talk, talking point, sir. I go on Fox News all the time as well. So let's not let's not go there with that. I said, what system have we created? Have we implemented that we have been in charge of? Name one. Is this why you don't like talking to black women, Larry? Wow. Um, Baltimore. <laughs> uh, Freddie Gray a few years ago. No, no, ago. no. That's mayors. I'm not talking. I said system. I'm Remember going to like tell you system. about this system if you allow me to finish my point. I'm not talking about somebody elected and doing a job, sir. I asked what system did we create? What financial okay, system Okay, let's talk about the system of one of the largest. Thank you. One of the systems of one of the largest uh, uh, cities <laughs> in America, Baltimore. Man, she's a, uh, Freddie she's Gray died in police custody a few years ago. Uh, the mayor was black. The head of the police department was black. Number two. Uh, it's not in charge of the system, but go ahead. Number two what person system? in charge of the police department was black. All Still of, not in all, charge of the all system. All of city council, Democrats, majority black. Six, Still not in charge of the system. Wow. Six That's a of, position. Six officers charged. Three of them were black. A judge before whom two of the officers tried their case, found him not guilty, was black. Still uh, not the, in charge of the, the system. The uh, city. Uh, Bro, what fucking system is she talking about? Like. You literally, he literally named everybody involved. Uh, intendant of public schools was black. The county superintendent of public schools is black. Uh, the attorney general at the time, Loretta Lynch, is black, as was the president of the United States, was black. And yet, still not in charge of the system. So I asked you a simple question, well, well, sir. Well, well, Wanda Sykes Thank said asked when, who was, when, who was the uh, system. when Barack Obama got elected, how are you going to complain about the man when you are the man? Now, from the president to the attorney general to the state attorney uh, to the mayor to the head of the police department uh, to the commission of the schools in the city and in the county uh, to the majority of city council in that city, all of them are black. And you're still saying that we don't run anything? So who's in charge of the no, system? No, no, no. I, I said who created the system. I didn't say we didn't run anything. I, I challenged a lot of those black leaders, by the way. I said who, when we talk about the system, who, what black people have been in charge of any system? I'm not talking about a position. I'm not talking about a mayor. You know good oh, so well. What are you talking about? saying that they're, just, so, they're black faces that are still in correct. those positions, so, but they're so, still correct. being part Similar of Similar to you, Mr. So, Elder. So, You're so, a black face in, in a position in the conservative movement. They're, they're just the same. They're just on the other side. I'm talking about so then, we have so never so been so then, so then when Martin Luther King said in 1966, I believe there could be a black president uh, in about 40 years' time, then it really doesn't matter if there's one or is no, it, yeah, one. It, so nothing, it, nothing he, changes. He was, he was well, naive. The system he was naive also then. killed him as well. The, well, we know that the FBI and the CIA also killed him. That system. You realize that, correct? Wow. An individual killed him. Right. That was also a part of 
Propotel through the system. Cointel correct? Yeah. Uh, not correct. Cointel Pro. Not, not, not correct. He was so killed. the FBI didn't have anything to do with it? The CIA didn't have anything to do with Diego it? Diego Hoover was definitely on Martin's ass. Like, come on. I, did, I didn't say he wasn't. Oh. Uh, Robert Kennedy is the one that approved the wiretaps. But to say that the FBI killed him? I mean, what's your evidence of that? Oh, no, I, yeah, that, that's, I, I, that's a pretty I, serious I, I, I charge. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Pretty serious charge. Yeah. Serious yeah. charge yeah, requires I was serious talking about the system. evidence. Yeah. What system? What you you just you making up shit. Uh, it is to uh, allow states to set up commissions of retired judges and retired DAs to get rid of these soft on crime George Soros backed DAs that are allowing a bunch of bad people on the streets or not charging bad people to the full extent of the law. And the people that by and large are hurt by these people are the very black and brown people living in the inner city. Mm. There's a um, uh, Larry Krasner is a uh, George Soros backed DA in Philadelphia. He's been impeached, but this Philadelphia state Senate wouldn't even take up the case. We've had two attempts to repeal a soft on crime DA in L.A. County, uh, and uh, it, it hasn't gone through yet. Uh, we've got a bunch of, in my opinion, this guy Alvin Bragg. Uh, he ran promising to get Donald Trump, and when he got in, he said the evidence wasn't there. And then one of the former DAs writes a book, accuses uh, Bragg of giving uh, Donald Trump a pass, and all of a sudden he brings counts against Donald Trump. I think it's unfair. Do you think members of your party are leaning toward fascism? <laughs> What? Define fascism. Authoritarianism. De- define fascism. I mean, the rejection of democracy, the rule of law, and equal rights under the law in favor of a, a strong man, Donald Trump, who interprets the popular will? Uh, no, I don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a long article about uh, Barack Obama by one of my uh, mentors. His name is Thomas Sowell. He's an economist. He's a black conservative, still alive, around 95 years old. And he wrote a piece in which he said a lot of people call uh, people like Barack Obama socialist. Socialism is government ownership of the means of production. Mm-hmm. Fascism is when the government allows you to own means of production, but government tells you what to do. And he said, frankly, technically, people like Barack Obama are fascists. That is to say, these are left-wing people telling you how to run your business, telling you what to sell, telling you what you can't sell. For example, in California, we have a governor named Gavin Newsom who recently said by the year 2035, no more sale of new gas-powered cars. How dare you? Uh, mm. Most people don't want a, uh, an EV. They like their own gasoline-powered cars, but now you're telling car dealership they can't even sell them? What do you call that? But what about, you know, uh, when they... Look, see, he never... Charlamagne don't never actually answer his questions or refute his points. He just hears a fact that goes against what he's saying and then deflects to something else. Well, what about... Well, that is a moral issue. I happen to be pro-life, and I believe that... Uh, um, that abortion is a sin. That's not telling women what to do with their body. That's expressing my opinion about whether or not it is right or it is wrong. For example, there is a guy right now behind bars in Philadelphia named Dr. Kermit Gosnell. Mm -hmm. He is an abortion doctor who performed late-term abortions. When Mm -hmm. I ask people who consider my position to be extreme, I ask them, tell me at what point do you believe pregnancy has gone so far that to terminate the unborn would be be homicide? And almost nobody will give you an answer. Uh, So in other words, what you're really telling me then is this guy, Dr. Kermit Gosnell, should be set free. He's a political prisoner. He was persecuted unfairly. If you won't, if you won't tell me when you think at what point a pregnancy right. uh, cannot uh, be terminated unless it's, unless, unless it's homicide, uh, then to me you're essentially allowing women to, to kill the unborn no matter how old that unborn is. And I, and I think that's wrong. I know, I know you probably got to go. Uh, <coughs> have you ever heard of yeah, right. a nigga wake up call? No. Oh, my God. It is an incident where a person of color forgets that they are of color and are reminded rather brutally by an unexpected act of racism. Oh, have you brother. ever had any of those? Oh, brother. I'm just asking. I'm just, have, you think you've ever well, had I, any Well, I'm acutely aware, Charlemagne, that I'm a black person, just as you are a black person. And when uh, Joe Biden insulted you by saying, mm-hmm. you ain't really black, we don't know whether or not you want to vote for me or vote for Donald Trump, uh, it seems to me that should have been a wake-up call on your part. How dare this guy come in here and insult you, a black man, and tell you you got to mm. think a certain kind of way? I'm amazed that you weren't mad about that. Tell him. Um, I didn't, I'm not going to say I, it upset me, just like I'm not letting you upset me. You know what I mean? I don't tend to get upset over things like well, that. But what I did say Well, well you just not talk not about, about a nigger wake-up call, and it seemed to me that that should have been a wake-up call on your part to have a white guy come in here who also said, by the way, uh, uh, about Mitt Romney, um, uh, uh, because he didn't want to put more regulations on Wall Street, going to put y'all back in chains. And Joe Biden has lied for decades about his civil rights record, claiming that he desegregated movie theaters and restaurants in, in Wilmington, Delaware, when he didn't any didn't do any of that. He lied and said that he tried to visit Nelson Mandela during apartheid South Africa. He did not. And he came in here and told you you aren't even black unless you think a certain kind of way. It seems to me that should have been a nigga wake-up call for you, but it wasn't, apparently. Yeah, I mean, no, for the record, I'm not a Democrat or Republican. 
I, I didn't say you were. Sure you I, are. I don't know what you are. I, I never yeah. even asked you about your party affiliation. Yeah, I'm just saying, you, but you are black. Absolutely. And, and to have a white guy come in here and tell you you have to say, uh, think a certain kind of way, otherwise you, quote, ain't black, wow. How should I have replied to him, you think? What I just now said, how dare you insult me and tell me I, I think as, as a human being, let alone as a black person. Right. I don't tell you how to think, Joe Biden. How dare you come in here and tell me how, to, how I, I, I should think. I'm going to vote for Donald Trump if I want to vote for Donald Trump. And, and if I want to vote for Donald Trump, it does not make me not black. 20% of black people, black men, as I said, voted for Donald Trump in 2020. Are they not black now? So only 80% of black people, black men walking around are really black, 20% are not, because they voted for Donald Trump. How insulting is that? How condescending is that? Mm. Right. I, I mean... You're probably right, but I didn't take it in that way. Who's, um, who's cocaine do you think it was in the White House since we're talking about drugs? I have no idea. <laughs> All I know is that it seems to me it should be scary that the that Secret Service had closed the investigation without identifying a suspect. Mm -hmm. What other kind of stuff go, goes in and out uh, of, the, of the White House without anybody knowing about it? But I have no idea. I just think it's bizarre that the investigation all of a sudden got closed that fast. And you think criminal charges should be brought against President Biden? I think there certainly should be an investigation about the pay-for-play stuff that we're hearing. Uh, the IRS whistleblowers are saying that the, they were told to uh, stand down in right. the investigation. Uh, I think there's a double standard going on, as I said earlier. For example, Donald Trump has been indicted for document possession. There is a special counsel investigating uh, uh, Joe Biden for document possession. But his defenders are saying, well, Joe Biden, unlike Donald Trump, turned over the documents uh, readily when they were found out to have them. And th if that's the case, why is the investigation still taking so long? Mm. Uh, tell them how they can support your campaign. LarryElder.com. I need $1 from 40,000 individuals, even if you want somebody else, to talk about some of the issues that Charlemagne and I have been talking about for the last several several minutes. I can get them front and center. So LarryElder.com, $1, 40,000 individuals. I will see you on August 23rd in Milwaukee. All right, this is Larry Elder. Yeah, I like Larry. Not just because his name is Larry, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thought he was pretty good. I thought he acquitted himself very well. That lady, uh, Tess, I think her name is, she is just insufferable, man. I can't, ugh. I can't deal with her. Thank you guys if you made it this far in the video. I appreciate you guys sticking around. Until next time, as always, one love.